science reporter for The Verge, um, specializing in space. I think uh, we're in a revolutionary time for space. The commercial space industry is booming right now. There's a lot to unfold over the next couple years, and I'm excited to be a part of it. Hi, my name is Sally French. I go by the drone girl on the internet, so I write all about drones and I'm really plugged into the drone community. I love it mostly because of the community out there, people who are really curious about moving this industry forward. Girl Nation. We're here with journalist Lauren Grush and Sally French and we're going to be talking about everything science and technology journalism that's redefining the way you think about the news. What's up Droney? Oh, how's it going? Dronerific. I thought it was Drone Girl. We call you Drone Girl. You actually like it and it's okay. That's okay. I really like the phrase Drone, drone Girl. Girl. Lady <laughs> drone like, Lady sounds like like a cat lady but instead of cats you just have like nine different drones. Yes, I want to be that. <laughs> uh, obviously this isn't the sort of drone I buy from Brookstone. Uh, you could buy this at Best Buy. Amazon. Really? Yeah. And this is the badass version, right? Oh, more than that. Why, why is this better than the badass version? Well, this drone has 4K video. It's autonomous, so you can set coordinates and it will actually fly that route. Could I deliver stuff with this? Well, not this one specifically, but there are drones out there that are testing drone delivery, like Google and Amazon. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, drone delivery is so far out in the future because there's so much that we have to work out in t terms of air traffic management and so many details we need to figure out. So I don't think you'll get drone delivery tomorrow. Oh, okay. It can just fall out of the sky and hit people. It probably could, yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Lauren, tell us about what you do. So I'm a science reporter for The Verge, it's a tech website, but um, I specialize in all things space, so that can be, you know, the latest news from NASA, stuff about the commercial space industry, astronomy, exoplanets, you name it, it covers a lot, space is, okay. space so is big. <laughs> for, those of us, for, for those of us that aren't space experts, right. what's an exoplanet? Those are planets that are outside of our solar system, okay. and we're constantly still discovering them, so sometimes we get really excited because they might have Earth-like characteristics, and that helps us in the search for alien life. Do you think aliens exist? I think I think we could definitely find it within our lifetime for sure. But obviously we're not going to because we can't even figure out climate change right now. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> I'm optimistic. Um, and within the, the scientific community, finding alien life is kind of like the ultimate goal. So good space journalists are very wary of saying that this might be alien life. We want to be absolutely certain. Science news. I feel like everything. Everyone wants to get so excited about it and they just love, you know, everything that's being reported. A lot of the times, my boss says this, you know, science reporters are like cheerleaders and they don't really, uh, you know, have that critical eye. So my job is to maybe take a step back and be like, okay, well, maybe we don't have the answers like we think we do. A good practice as a journalist is just to never, never assume that what somebody is telling you right. is right. You know, one time somebody got mad at me for using the word propellant instead of fuel because they are technically different. Um, so yeah, that does happen a lot. But I think I don't think you necessarily need to have that that technical degree in order to tell this because I think of myself more as like a translator, and that's that's kind of the real skill that I need to have mm -hmm. in order to do my job effectively. Sally, you do something new and adventurous with drones. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, I did undercover investigations back in my first journalism job. Uh, I worked for NBC as an undercover reporter, so we used hidden cameras for that. Uh, and I decided I wanted to take my cameras up into the air, so I quit the hidden cameras, and now I actually am more interested in aerial photography and how journalists can use that. So my first journalism job using a drone was for NPR, and uh, we made a video for their online site. We flew over a fire, and it was a prairie fire, to show uh, the scope of the fire, how big it was, how close it was to the road, and an aerial photo really captures that so much better than a photo from the ground. Okay. I want to talk about failure, because a lot of people, when they go into their craft, whether it's engineering, science, journalism, mistakes are part of the learning process. I think the biggest thing that I've learned through my career is just to never assume and and 
there is this pressure with journalists to be fast, you know, and to to get up a great story as quickly as possible. And when that happens, there's a there's a tendency to cut corners and to think that, oh, I, I definitely know what this means when you don't. I have a lot of vigilant readers and they'll let me know if mm -hmm. I'm right or wrong, you know. I remember my first failure. I was going for the job of editor-in-chief at my student newspaper in high school and I was positive I would get it and I didn't. And I think it's so important to have a good hard failure because I didn't get the job. So instead, I got an internship at, a, at my city's newspaper, which is so much better than working for my high school newspaper anyway. Every job I've worked in, I've always had a failure and it's taught me to, to don't settle and to, to keep working harder. And every time I failed, I've just gone and done something so much better because of it. Right. And to remember, everybody makes mistakes, right? Like, nobody is immune to messing up. Every mistake I've ever done has always led to something cooler. <laughs> You're absolutely right. right. And everyone does make mistakes. Even two years ago, I didn't think that I would be doing what I am today with drones. Uh, so I had no interest in drones or anything aerospace related when I was young. I just sort of got into it by accident. Uh, so when I was young, I was always into journalism, but I had no idea I would be doing drone journalism and, today. And what was it that connected you? Uh, well, I was in college and I needed one credit to graduate. And so basically the only class that fit into my schedule was a class called drones. So I needed the class to graduate. So I signed up and I got totally hooked. And we, uh, we flew the drones and we learned about how journalists can use them. And so I decided to start Drone Girl when that class ended. Awesome, awesome. You, you are a self-proclaimed nerd, which is a good thing, but you didn't go into science and technology, but you had heavy influences that helped you get into science writing. What was that? Yeah, so I grew up with two NASA engineers for parents. They both worked at Johnson Space Center. My mom was the orbiter chief engineer, so she was very much involved with the space shuttle program. And then my dad was the head of the propulsion branch toward the end of his career, so I had two big nerds for parents so <laughs> they heavily encouraged engineering when I was trying to pick a, a career path but I was very much loved telling stories I was always playing with the video camera um, and I just loved being creative and I thought maybe if I went down the engineering route you know there wasn't that that path for me but then when I started to pick stories to write in my career I noticed I only really wanted to write about space and, and science. science I didn't really care about politics or crime or any of that so I, I feel like uh, science and space stories are much more aspirational and, and optimistic what about you well, who were your role models in the drone community I've found it's really important to have uh, role models. And when I first started flying drones, there were no women uh, who flew drones. And I, I met a local hobby group, and it was all guys and very nice people. But there was no one I felt like who was really, really like me. Uh, but I started looking around online, and I met some people online. <laughs> and they were these wonderful women. Um, and we actually have a women in drones group. And I find that they're so supportive. And if I ever have a question, sometimes I'm too afraid to ask ask a huge group of people, but I know I can ask this close group of female friends, mm -hmm. and so they're really my mentors and my role models. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us on Nerd Girl Nation. We're going to be following your work, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you for being here with us on Nerd Girl Nation. She's got a way with words. She writes about outer space. I read about it on The Verge. And it brought a smile to my face Have you heard about exoplanets? She always keeps me up to date These nerdy journalists are pretty great She knows about drones And everything they can do I read about it on my phone and it seemed too crazy to be true These technological advances come At an always faster rate But she steps up to the plate With all the content she creates Cause these nerdy journalists are pretty great You know these nerdy journalists are pretty great